We're speaking with Nitzana Darshanleitner, the author of the book Harpoon, Inside the Covert War, War Against Terrorism's Money Masters. And it's a book about your work, isn't it? Yeah, Inter Alia. It's actually the book about the uh, secret unit in the Mossad that track terror financing. Um, it uh, was done and established by the uh, legendary head of the Mossad, Mayor Dagan. Mm -hmm. And uh, the goal of this unit was to track terror funding. Mm -hmm. They had a mission, follow the money, target the money, kill the money. Money was the oxygen to the terrorism, and they were determined to choke it off. Isn't, isn't this a job that the Israeli government ought to be pursuing themselves? Yes, they did. Uh, however, they came to junctures where they could not continue or they were rejected by their targets. And then there were needed our help. They approached us. Uh, Shurat Hadin is a law center, which is a non-for-profit organization, mm -hmm. and asked us to file several lawsuits or go after targets um, that they weren't able to. And with the information provided to us by them, we are able to go after banks that provided financial services to terror organizations or countries that aided and abetted terrorism. How does the, uh, the international uh, legal, uh, the Hague, the, the courts, how do they view your work? After September 11, the courts in the United States were very receptive to this type of litigation on behalf of victims against terror organizations. Um, we don't bring our cases in the Hague. Uh, there are civil cases. Those who we bring in the Hague are criminal indictment for war crimes, haven't been litigated yet, still waiting for the court to hear. But the civil cases, those on behalf of terror victims, being heard, being litigated, and the courts, you know, courts in the United States, Canada, Israel are non-biased courts. They're going after these cases on face value, and if they find that we are able to prove liability and damages, they're giving us judgments. Mm -hmm. And how collectible are these judgments? Well, we have been successful in collecting some of these judgments and parts of this judgment to the extent of um, three hundred million dollars so far. Mm -hmm. Banks or the Palestinian Authority usually settle these cases out of court. They don't want a judgment against them for aiding and abetting terrorism. They don't want to be awarded hundreds of millions of dollars damages against them. Mm -hmm. Countries that support terrorism, Iran, Syria, North Korea, we enforce our judgment by going after their assets, putting a lien on bank accounts, on real estate, on buildings that belong to these countries. And again, we're able to succeed successfully enforce our judgments. Mm -hmm. How about the banks? How have your judgments or your uh, cases uh, changed their way of doing business? Banks no longer agree to open bank accounts to designated organization because it's not worth their while. They don't want a judgment in the end of the day blaming them for helping terrorism. They want to continue their operations in the United States and nobody wants a judgment condemning them with being involved with terrorism. They might lose their license. Um, banks no longer agree to open bank accounts to Islamic charities that identify with terror organizations and they also don't operate in terror zones like South Lebanon, like Gaza, and that creates a huge problem for the terror organizations who operate in Gaza because they need to bring hundreds of millions of dollars into the Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. What should Americans know about the, uh, the work that uh, the State Department particularly under President Obama, has d done to, uh, to help or hinder your work? Look, State Department never was the friend of these cases. They think that you have to um, talk to your enemy, you should not litigate against them. Mm -hmm. um, under Obama's administration, the State Department came to court and intervened in our cases 
uh, standing to the side of the terror organizations of the Palestinian Authority really? uh, and against the rights of the victims, sometimes standing to the side of Iran and not to the side of the victims. And this is something that has to change and hopefully will change with the new administration. Um, we have at least three cases pending in the Supreme Court. Two of them are waiting for the position of the State Department. And we hope that for the first time, the State Department will stand to the side of the victims of the American citizens and not to the side of the terror organizations. Uh -huh. And this new law, the, terror, the Taylor Force, as you call it? Yes, this is a new law that uh, has to reduce, to detect from USA to the Palestinians, every money paid to the Palestinian prisoners um, who are sitting in the Israeli jail, the security prisoners. The uh, law haven't passed yet, hopefully it will pass. And he was promoted by the family of Taylor Force, 29 years old student that uh, served in the US Army in Afghanistan and Iraq. And uh, after that he went to business school, he took a trip to Israel and his in second day in Israel got stabbed to death on Jaffa port. Mm -hmm. So what does this book uh, teach or uh, reveal to people who are not familiar with the subject? That there is a new way to fight terrorism. That there is an unconventional way that Israel came up with, mm -hmm. with their legendary head of the Mossad, Mayor Dagan. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is fighting terror financing, it's destroying the infrastructure of the terror organizations by going after their money. The uh, paradigm is simple, if you cut the flow of the money, you can cut the flow of the terrorism. And this paradigm was adopted later on by United States and every Western country. United States is using the war against their finding in its battle against ISIS. They're going and bomb oil fields that belong to ISIS from the air just to cut their source of income. Mm -hmm. They're going after financial people in ISIS mm -hmm. just to eliminate any financial infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And they harmed this way uh, ISIS in a tremendous way. ISIS budget was standing on $2 billion in 2014, today is standing on $200 million only. Uh, the Consul General from Germany to the city was here this evening. To what extent are the uh, European countries helping or hindering your work? We are not so much involved with Europe when it comes to a fight against terror financing. Um, the Harpoon agents joined with the United States Treasury and the DEA to go after the uh, terror funding um, in different countries, not necessarily Europe. I expect though now that the uh, council from Germany learned about this uh, mm -hmm. new area uh, and perhaps even bought the book, we'll go and mm -hmm. teach the German government mm -hmm. that there is a new way to fight terrorism because the in the end, Germany is not immune, mm -hmm. and as the rest of Europe, London, Brussels, mm -hmm. Paris, Madrid, got hit with terror attacks, Germany is the next in line. And in order to prevent terror attacks mm -hmm. and to fight it, they have to destroy and eliminate the financial infrastructure of the terror organizations. Uh -huh. Are there governments who will do this work from Western Europe, in your view? I believe they would. I believe they would. I believe that uh, in the end, this is uh, one of the most effective ways to fight terrorism. And if these countries want to survive, they have to take and do anything they can, including destroying the financial basis of the terror organizations. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Good Thank luck you. In your work. Thank you very much. Okay.